Well, good morning, YouTube. Today I'm out of Minden, Nevada, and I'm taking the 501 out on an adventure test. This is a, going to be an, a long ride, I'm hoping, to get about 120 miles, a, quite a large loop to go over Mount Seagull and down into uh, Smith's Valley and explore some dry lake beds. The test is just to uh, do an adventure ride. I don't want to do gnarly, I don't really want to do too much tight, but I want to do endurance and just see how the 501 is to be on all day long. Well, it's definitely uh, loose out here. Definitely gonna have to take my time and conserve energy, find a find a good rhythm. Endurance is the name of the game today. Also been trying to get my endurance up with uh, exercise and riding my mountain bike. The big thing is energy conservation. With these long days, you got to be able to ride on your game the whole time because you never know what's going to be thrown at you and when. That. Yeah, there's an old mine. All right, this is the way to Mount Single. Last time I rode up here, I was on my 350, and it was a lot of work to get up because of the lack of power. One of the reasons I went to the 500. It's really loose out here. I've got a M5 Evo IRC on the rear, big knobby, and uh, I think it's a good tire for out here. It just grabs everything. One thing I do when, uh, when I'm riding downhill is I turn off my motor. That way I can hear my brakes, see how much traction I have. Also, it's a great way to save fuel when you know you got long descents because honestly you don't need power you've already got momentum Woo! very soft well the road is the creek now Slick. Yeah, that's that's work right there. The other side might be better actually. A little looser, but not so. Nice. On an adventure bike, this would be a lot of work. These rain ruts make it the most difficult to ride. That's gorgeous. All right, now we're gonna go down this canyon 
and out to that valley. We'll have to take our time on this. Make sure I can, the things I go down, I think I can get up or know I can get up. All right, we're getting higher. But we're gonna go down that way. This is gorgeous. It's a nice little uh, Jeep trail. Just kind of riding it like a trials. Keep it smooth. Stay up on the pegs. Take good lines. Light on the brakes. carrying a Garmin Mini with me and I told my wife where I was going to be today. Some of these bushes are pretty tough. Oh, that's gorgeous. They call this like uh, Mineral Canyon I think is what I saw on the map. Could be wrong on that. I'm pretty sure that's what the map said. I've done this as a loop before, I've never gone out it to the valley down below. That's a pretty deep rut there. Okay, good. There's an alternate. I think the alternate's a good idea right there. I bet you all this was mined at one time. I think they call them filings or I can't remember what they call the remnants of a mined area. I'm doing this trip today because I want to get prepared for Death Valley and I want to get a feel for how it's like to ride a 120 miles in a day on this bike in this kind of terrain. This gravel can be tricky. I actually like going downhill without motor braking if I can. This gives me a little bit more feedback on my terrain too. All right, we're going this way. Very cool. I don't think I've been down this far. That was dumb. Alright, better be careful here. Got a minute now. What I don't want to do is fall over in these ruts, you know, because that could hurt me. So I kind of have to pick safe high ground when I can, and when I can't, just accept the rut. I believe this is called Red Canyon. That's really sketchy. Big 
takes a lot of energy to keep the bike balanced on the stuff. You want to go fast on the stuff, but the rocks keep telling you that you're doing that at your own peril. Because they like to pick, kick the front end and rear out a little bit. Now I'm going to get into the land of the sun. Okay, this is Red Canyon Road. Now I need to go left. Hopefully I'm allowed to go left. Looks like it. Okay, there's supposed to be a road here, so I gotta kinda look for it. That looks like kind of a road to me. Alright. I think I wanna get on the other side of that. Alright, we'll keep going a ways. I'm gonna turn around. Oh no, look at that. Okay, hopefully this will get me through. Well, this is adventure riding. Going the right direction, I just don't know where this is gonna take me. I think there's a road over here. Hopefully there's no fence. So I'm not sure if I'm on private property or not like itchy boot style right here. Alright, there's a road here. And now we're going to be going to this farming community and I want to go to that dry lake bed over there. That's private property, okay. Alright, well then we gotta go this way. Trying to find a way to get around this private property without crossing a fence or a gate. If not, I'll have to go back and hopefully I can get around here somehow. There's got to be a public road somewhere. Can't go that way. A gentleman just helped me understand where I'm at. Now I'm on a public road. He was very kind. And he said, in fact, the land I was riding on was his. Going out that way. There's a dry lake bed out there. I think it's Artesian Lake. But I think I'm on Artesia Road. It might be Artesia Lake. The breeze feels really good. This is a, like 35, 40, standing up really nice. On this stuff, it's really kind of fun. I want to go check out this dry lake bed. It's pretty soft here. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks kind of sketch. Ooh -wee. That's soft stuff. Yeah, not to do 
that one. Don't need to get stuck out there. We're gonna be going over that pass. Going further and deeper. So we're at this crossroads here and that's the way I'm going to go. I want to go, there's a dry lake bed that I've ridden before. I want to hit that, it's going to be my furthest point out. And uh, about 38 miles, uh, bike's doing good on fuel. This is really fun. is out in the middle of Timbuktu and it's awesome. Well, the 501's kicking a lot of butt out here today. I'm uh, glad I brought it on this trip. This is why I built the bike, was to do adventure and to do it safely. Just having a blast today. 501 is so, so good out here. It is getting warm. Yeah, cool. Alright, it's time to move on. I've never done Sunrise Pass this direction, so this will be interesting. Out here, I wish it was geared a little taller.
beautiful out here. Boy, I can see that as it rains out here, these roads can be really hard to travel. This is part of Smith's Valley. So we're climbing out, we're going back up Sunrise Pass, and then we're gonna to go to Pine Nut Valley. second sandwich get a little rest in the shade I'm gonna continue forward I've been having a little bit of trouble trying to get my suspension the way I like it I like it to be more plush on this stuff and it's being a little bit more aggressive but I, um, I'm gonna ride it a bit more and just uh, try to get a rhythm and let the bike do what the bike wants to do Two miles, 73 miles. Pressure on the rear a bit and slow down the rebound a couple clicks. Probably two clicks out on the compression, one to two clicks out, and then from when I started today, and then two clicks in on the rebound. And that's just soaking up that stuff a lot better. In the front, I went two clicks in on the rebound, and I think I'm about two clicks out from where I was, maybe three somewhere in there. Oh, this is pretty. I think this is Pine Nut Valley. Maybe got three hours of sun left. I might do Mount Siegel if I have the time. We'll see how quick we get to that intersection. Totally sure I got a long 
ways to go to get back across this ridge line or this valley. Assuming it's about 20 miles. Adventure pegs are really, really crucial because I'm standing up a lot and they're um, such a nice platform. They're the fast way adventure pegs. I love these things. That's much better. It's, it's not like it's all gone, but it's definitely way smoother than it was. The rebound was, was coming back too fast and like smacking everything. Like there's a little more planted right now than it did earlier. See how far that fire went through here. All this is all gone. Just got left the trees. Totally different vibe. As far as fuel economy goes, this bike's really good. Got 90 miles on it, and I don't think I'm even a halfway through. I don't know, I'm probably five miles from out single. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go to the top since I'm out here. Rain over here, rockier. Kind of going back to where we were earlier today. One giant loop. Definitely, the closer I get to the mountain, the rougher it gets. All right, now we're getting into the. technical riding here. Driving through a riverbed. Oh, this place just feels like time forgot about it. This place is crazy. I feel like I'm in a, like on a different planet right now. This is 
bridge is working a lot better now. Hope I'm going the right way. Uh, I need a break. It's like the yellow brick road, man. Wow. All right, well, I'm really close to the left I need to take to go up to the peak. And then the right that will not take, that'll be the way I go down. This is pretty technical here. You know, just have to keep moving. Okay, first gear. Get to the top of the mountain, then come back down. This trail doesn't give you much. And when it does, I'll take it. Deep ruts. That's kind of loose and slick, too. After 100 miles, you get tired. Like BDRs with a lot of energy out of you too. I know they're usually not as technical as these. This might be, but still takes the energy out of you. Right is the uh, road to the summit. That's the road there. I believe the top of that mountain is about 9,500 feet. So I'm guessing we're about 85 right now. Probably a thousand feet higher up there. This isn't going to go easy on me either.
All right, well, that's why we're up here. We can get to the top. The knot is really good on this. smell coolant right now. At least 10 to 15 miles, not totally sure. Uh, you can see my tire track just chugging all this loose gravel and sand. Whoa, that is super loose. Very loose. Just an amazing, amazing place. It's just, it's surreal. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that makes me feel like I was made. Going down. It's super loose. It's like a heavy sand. about just tearing the tires and the terrain. That was good. Get the engine to cool down a bit. I tell you, it takes a lot of water out here. I'm down to my last, uh, drink my last electrolyte bottle and put the last bottle in my camelback. So what I got, I got.
All right. Well, 12 miles to Red Canyon, 13 and a half to Sunrise Pass. Johnson Lane is 23 and a half miles away. We just hit 100 miles on the dot. 100 miles. Still got quite a bit of gas too. I think this thing will do 150. I don't know that I would try more than 150. I might carry a, um, a fuel bottle with me when we go to Death Valley just to have a little peace of mind that I could probably do 150 plus. If I remember correctly, this has got some uh, rocky washes as you go lower. But it's good. This will take us back to. Uh, I guess that's Pine Nut Road. We'll back to where? Back to Lone Tree. Ugh, rocks, man. Lots of rocks. No shortage of rocks out here. I don't think if you took a rock home with you as a souvenir, anybody would care. Oh, man, that's some tricky stuff right there. Making me work for every mile. Kind of appreciated those wide open uh, gravel esque roads where you could just kind of move without much concentration. That's the other thing about these bikes is when you get tired, when you make mistakes, you got too much bike, it can kind of tangle you up. Okay, this is a workout. All right, we're getting into like wilderness land. This is kind of cool. Kind of crazy. Oh man, that was deep. This is like one finger clutch stuff right here. I'd be really nervous on a Tenere 700 and that stuff. One thing about the 501 is it is pretty being light. For how big of a displacement of bike it is, you can get pretty surgical with it. No! Oh, ow, that really hurt. Ooh, oh, man. I usually wear arm protection and chest protection, and that kind of probably would have helped. Boy, I just got stabbed with that thing. I like lanced. I'm glad it didn't. Glad it was dead. If it would have been fresh, the thing would have impaled me. I'm going to have a chest protector or my kidney belt on today, but I forgot them. That's why I wear them. Stuff like that. It's gonna leave a mark for sure. Well, this has been a pretty awesome day. Uh, over 100 miles, probably close to 110. A lot of it was pretty technical. Some of it wasn't, but all of it was great. What an awesome adventure day. Now the question is how will I feel tomorrow? Getting 
towards the end. Definitely the longest uh, Nevada ride I've ever done uh, on the dirt bike.